I'm Stefan Bauman. Welcome to the Grand View. America's National Parks through the eyes of an artist. Lucy went on to Yosemite and she said a couple of weeks ago she's going to go to Yosemite, which Yosemite is fabulous right now. I mean, if you've got to go to Yosemite, this is the month to go because it is filled with waterfalls and it's spectacular. Um, the national parks, unfortunately, are getting loved to death and Yosemite is one of those and it almost feels like I don't want to go up there now because it's like Disneyland. And it's true, it's, it's crazy. They have limited the parking. It used to be when I took classes to parks, we used to go in and you could just pull alongside the road and 15 cars could set up and we could go in the meadows. Now they put boulders all the way down so you get into the park. They want your money. They want your 20 bucks to get in. And then they make it so that you can only get to where the shuttle bus is and then you have to get out and get on a shuttle bus and, and move around. So it's, it's definitely a different experience than it used to be. Um, but I mean, can you imagine if everybody went there and just used it like they did in the olden days, you would not be able to get through because people would be massing around. So yeah. um, it's just the nature of all the national parks. Um, you just got back from Zion. And when we used to go to Zion, we used to drive. Did you go on the Zion trip? Not with you, no. Okay. But we used to, you know, we'd go in caravan of 15 cars. And a lot of the people that were traveling with us, they did not, they never had dr driven to the national parks or did anything like that. Mm -hmm. And we would drive down to the bottom of Zion and paint all the afternoon and um, wander in the meadows and stuff. And all that's closed off now. So even as artists, it's very difficult to go to the national parks and paint. Zion, you have to get on a bus and they take you down inside and that makes it almost impossible when you've got canvases and things like that to do that. Um, one of the things before you left is that I said, how many paintings I wanted you to do? Six. Six paintings. Because you were going to go ten days, right? Uh, seven days. Seven days. So if you went to oh, yes. Yosemite, you were just all romantic on oh, a yeah, vacation. Sure. <laughs> Um, so anyway, if you're going to go to Yosemite for s seven days, um, my request is to get six paintings. Mm -hmm. Now, I oftentimes when students go on vacation, yeah, well, oftentimes when I get students to go on a trip, they go, oh, I'm going to Europe for 10 days or 15 days. And I go, okay, then plan on bringing about seven paintings back. And then I'm usually lucky if they do any. <laughs> I had uh, one of my coaching students, she went off to Europe and she had intended on painting every day, you know, and, but how things happen is that I think she ended up doing two or three paintings and even then it was under distress, you know, that it was just really a difficult thing. The thing ultimately though that I hear from people who travel, the thing that they regret the most is when they get back they go, oh I should have tried a little harder. Mm -hmm. Because you realize, wow, I'm not going to have another chance to do that again. Right? When's the next time you're going to Zion? I don't know. See, and you did, sure. yeah, you, maybe sometime, but you know you have Bryce Canyon and you have Canyon de Chez, which is my favorite of all canyons, Canyon de Chez is my favorite. Um, it? It's in the northern eastern part of Arizona. Um, and what's awesome about Canyon de Chez is that the National Park is on the rim and it's still Navajo country in the middle. So in order for you to get into the park you have to have a Navajo guide and it's completely closed off. And so it's not a popular park for people to go to because it's not like they have a beautiful lodge on the outside of it but it's not like people can just go there and do whatever they want you are limited and it's kind of off the beaten path a little bit. It's the best kept secret in the world. It is absolutely amazing. And then if you go through from, from the Grand Canyon, you decide to go to Canyon de Chez, you absolutely must go through the Hopi Reservation. When do we do a... A caravan? Something like that over 
I don't know. Sign up for one. <laughs> Let's do that. A caravan through Arizona. Oh, yeah. Why not? Yes. Why not? Why? John's on a couch right now. Uh, John is here. Okay, why is that here? Oh. So, so anyway, so part of, part of being a planar painter is first to go with people that paint or be artists. It's really difficult when you go with your husband and he wants to go do stuff and, and you want to go paint. So that becomes a conflict of, of uh, things. So you have to negotiate these things before you go. You know, you go, George. So what you do is before you go on a trip and you, you, you need to do this before you go to another park, is you tell your husband, okay, because your husband might do the same. If your husband was into, let's say, volleyball or, or kayaking or something, and he said, you know, I'm going to go to Zion and I'm going to go kayaking, you would, you would encourage him to go kayaking. Then you would go painting. But if he said, oh, I need to go kayaking, I want to, and you go, I don't want to go kayaking, but you go, I want you to enjoy it. But see, a lot of times when artists go on vacation with their spouses, they never make that kind of commitment. They go, well, you know, I'll suffer and not bring my paints. I want to paint, you know, and so I won't say anything. It's like before you go, tell your husband, like you did with George, uh, Stefan wants five paintings. And so you could always use me as an excuse. But, but even a big group will support you. It's, yeah, no, it's, it, I get that, but it's not that hard. Part of it is your declaration. You know, part of it is having enough um, uh, interest in your own, huh? Who's spot? To actually say, you know, uh, this is my trip too. Okay, and, and I want an hour, I want an hour every day for what I want to do. And if that means you get up at five in the morning, which you can do in the summertime, and do an hour before everybody else gets ready, because chances are you probably didn't get out of the motel till nine. No, no, we were out pretty early. Were you? Because you had to get into the park early because there was such long lines. It was so, so crowded mm -hmm. because of memory. Yeah, yeah. And they are crowded. Two hours to get into the But the great thing, the great thing about the great thing about the parks is you can have them completely to yourself before 9 o'clock and completely after 5 o'clock. It's between 9 and 5 that they're not the best. But if you want to become a planar painter, you really have to decide that that's what you want to do. Now, one of the issues that I see with your, your thing is that you were going with George, you're going on a romantic weekend to Yosemite. One of the things that you have to do is you have to be reasonable. Okay, so you have a 16 by 20 there. Now, reasonably, yeah, that's, that's because I saw a Capitan and I saw big eyes. You saw big eyes, but the thing is, there's nothing more <laughs> frustrating than yeah, to okay. take on too much and have these illusions of grandeur and then not have them satisfied. So, if you're going with a big group, then, or you're going with George for a romantic weekend, or even if you're just going with your spouses, carry a thumb box with you. And say to yourself, this is all I'm going to take, is I this little box. Like you will. It's I'll wonderful. And so if you can just pull away somewhere and say, George, you go fishing for an hour or go for a walk, and then I'm just going to sit here and paint, you can do amazing things with this. Now, one of the reasons why you weren't that powerful and successful is that you were kind of a little unreasonable. First thing, when you go to a park and you're bringing these big canvases, and they're wet. They're hard to put in the car. And so you've got luggage and all the stuff that you're doing and then you're asking George to juggle around these canvases. You know, so it becomes kind of a pain in the neck. Um, if you do these little thumb, thumb boxes like this, all of your paints are inside here. And really, it doesn't matter if you do little paintings or big paintings. Sometimes the little paintings are very intimate. Yeah, so see inside you have... So what do you, you say there? You have get it for the correct thumb, though. I know, not, maybe, not even... This. Oh, like for left-handed? You can do left-handed too the other way. No, it doesn't work. It, it, uh, this is just the water. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's not quite. Do they make a right hand, left hand? They do, but I didn't. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good. That's a good point. So I'm holding it left-handed here, and the thumb does hit that spot. Um, you know, when when these original boxes, when they were first made, they were first designed by artists that were traveling out west, and even in Europe some, they would take cigar boxes, old cigar boxes that um, would be made out of wood, and they would convert the cigar boxes for painting, because reasonably, the reason why the whole plain air painting stuff started was because people wanted, they couldn't get photographs of things, so people wanted little color sketches to know what things look like. So you had Edgar Payne and these artists going in, and they did little tiny canvases. The main thing that you want to do, this is as small as you want to go, but the main thing that you want to do is, is declare yourself a certain size and be reasonable with that size. I would go 9 by 12, probably the largest. 12 by 16 when you go with other artists, but 9 by 12 is about as big as you want to go. And then you want to have a drying box. You shouldn't be painting on canvas. You should have a, uh, panels. This here holds a panel up in front here. So this becomes your easel. So you can paint here. This closes up and you can squish it all down. But if you... Huh? This is a thumb box and this is Utrex. Yeah, it's a thumb box and it's done by Utrex. Um, and it's a very, very handy little box. Um, when I find myself sitting in painting out of that, you forget that you're painting small. It's almost like you, 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 you get so zeroed in. It's kind of the, um, you know, if you sit and watch a little television set, after a few minutes, that little television set, because you sit up close to it and everything, actually seems big. And if you have a huge television set and you sit in front of it for a while, you forget that it's big. You can almost have the same experience. In fact, now they're making televisions really small and they're just holding them up to your eyes like this, virtual reality. And you can actually feel like you're looking at a big television set. So if you're focusing on a little tiny painting and you're there to get color sketches and things, it's a very intimate. And imagine if you had uh, all, you, all of your national parks, let's say you're going to that and then you have a timeshare in Yellowstone and you have a whole wall filled with five by sevens all the way down of these beautiful intimate sketches. Um, maybe all framed the same way, but you could do a whole wall. I mean, what an awesome thing to have. Mm -hmm. And so it's not unreasonable for you to do that, even when you guys came up to Mount Shasta last week. You know, it would have been fun to do one of Bernie Falls. Yeah. Yeah, but that would have been a fun little thing. You know, if you just, and I know you're like anti plein air painting, but when you think about it, it's like, okay, well, I don't have to be totally invested. I could have a thumb box. So next time you come up, I'm going to give you mine and we'll go paint for an hour. It gives you something to do. Well, the best thing I realize is that you see light, you know, and I saw everything much better than the photograph. Really, in the photograph, you turn like a dark stuff, you know. Yeah, but, and then plan two. If you want to guarantee that you um, get work done, is to leave your cameras at home. Don't take any pictures. And so consequently, if you find yourself going to Yosemite without your camera, and you are totally dedicated to like go there as an artist, you're in trouble, yeah. yeah. So you, you almost have to force yourself yeah. to photograph, I mean to, to reproduce everything on, um, on canvas to have a record of it. Now one of the reasons why artists are not successful with plain air painting is that we are sensation hounds. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to Yosemite and we feel like we've got to see the whole park 12 times. <laughs> you know, you go in, you drive through, oh, I'm just going to check it out, up and down and over, and then you go to have lunch, and then it's like, let's go again, and you go again, and you go again. When the olden days, when they used to come to the parks, they would go to the park, and then that was the end of the day, and then they would camp. And when you set up camp, you didn't unset it up and move again. You would be there for two or three days. So you would stay at one end of the park for two or three days. And then you would go to the middle of the park and you'd be there. And so part of it is not to be um, so hungry and take it at a slower pace. So like when you hit the park, stop. Take out your paints. Say, George, this is my hour. And just start with that one. 
Take your hour first instead of driving around. Don't look for the perfect spot. The perfect spot is right where you stop. Well, you can find the part too, that's for sure. Yeah, and then, and then just <laughs> capture that. When you are absolutely at the most heightened, because what happens is it becomes, you become like Moses, looking for the promised land. <laughs> it's like, I've got to find the <laughs> best spot. Yeah, I remember, I, first time I went up to Mount Rainier, Next to the park. I was like, oh, I've got to find, the, you know, the money shot, right? So I got to... So I'm driving, 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 oh, around that corner, next to you. And you know, so it said, welcome to, to Mount Rainier. And I thought, oh, great. You know, and I, every turn I'd go, oh, this is going to be more spectacular, more spectacular. And an hour later it says, thank you for coming to Mount Rainier National Park. And I was like already out of the park again, you know. And then I thought, oh, shit, I should have done the first scene that I saw. Um, also, another thing that you have with painting the parks is that it's very easy to paint the postcards. So when you're there, you kind of fall in love with painting the big vistas, the Half Dome, El Capitan. You know, like you said, you brought a big canvas because you wanted to paint El Capitan. But really, the, the successful paintings are the intimate corners. You're better off going to Yosemite and not painting Bride of El Falls. Actually paint the bottom of Bride of El Falls where there's some water and some, you know, and reasonably that's easier to conquer than trying to get all of that. Um, the big postcard paintings are really not the best paintings per se. You know, they're, they're kind of almost like glorified, glorified posters. Um, you're better off painting the bridge the things that people don't see, the little rock bridges with the little waterfalls through and stuff, that when you walk up to the waterfall, let George walk up to the waterfall. You just stay here at the bottom of the parking lot. You get more better vistas at the parking lot than you do when you go up to the thing. It's spectacular to stand in front of that, but it's impractical. Well, I did a painting. With, with my sketching that you've seen, you is, is, that you find is the, the cropper, I call it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so e easy to look at a beautiful spot and sit down and go, let's see, you know, where, how am I going to do this? And if you can frame it, you know, and, and get, get the vision that you want, and you can even adjust it to the size of your canvas proportionally. Yeah, they have those little croppers it's that go little, back and... It's just a little yeah. so you can open the window, mm -hmm. and, you can, and then you can focus on that, and bam, you're off and running. Yeah. But when it's so big... And it's hard, especially when you're like at the Grand Canyon, because you have so much to look at to try to isolate just the park. Um, a lot of times you can do is just look through your camera if you have the old fashioned kind of lens and you can kind of crop it down. But you've, you, you gotta, you've gotta forget that we are sensation hounds. And so we wanna see the big money shots. We paid our $20. We wanna stand in front of Bridal Veil Falls. 25? 35. $35. To get in, it's worth it. Just think of all the toilet paper you use. Um, that's a, think of all the toilet paper you use. You know, when you think about what you get for that. But anyway, so go to the national parks, paint smaller, have lower expectations, organize your time. Um, let everybody know that that's what you want to do out of this experience. Um, and, uh, you know, come back. Because the, ultimately, the thing that you'll regret is that you didn't do it. Mm. That's true. That's the thing you'll regret. The, it's a lifetime. Yeah, the Golden Eagle, well, the, if you're retired or military, you can get... $50 for a Golden Eagle, we can go Indian National Yeah, but you have to be retired to buy the Golden Eagle. You but you can buy... But you can also buy the yearly the pass, which is like $100. <laughs> what time did you start painting? Uh, well, uh, that one is in the afternoon. Okay. See, one of the problems, too, when you're going on a trip like this is that the best time to paint is from nine, from six in the morning to nine, and then from six at night to nine o'clock at night, especially in summertime. You want to go, most of the problems with plein air painting is that uh, artists are painting midday, and so the lighting is flat, so you don't have no lights or shadows. And then one of the most important things, that's why you don't want to go out and paint big canvases, is that you want to work on your memory exercises. Mm -hmm. The most important thing on plein air painting is learning how to see things when you're inspired and then stay inspired and not paint as you go. And so what happens is as you paint as you're going, the light's changing every seven minutes. Monet said the light changes every seven minutes. And if you're trying to paint every seven minutes, 
um, the lights changing, 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 and your paintings become very flat. The most important thing you can have in a fine painting are shadows. And if you paint in the afternoon, there are no shadows. And if you paint as every time you look up, the, the, the things changing, things that used to be shadows will be in light, and your paintings get flatter and flatter and flatter. So the best thing you can do is to go out there, look at where the lights and shadows are, and not do anything at first. Just study it and say, there's light, there's shadow, I'm inspired, that's what I want to do. Take your canvas and very quickly draw it out, and then turn your back to the subject. Oh, you don't want to see it? You don't want to look at it. Oh, okay. Because what happens is now you've got to remember it in your head. As you're remembering it in your head, you'll remember where the lights and shadows are. The problem is if you're painting like this, All the time, yeah. you, you're constantly readjusting your painting. And most plein air paintings fail because you're constantly readjusting your painting. If you look at Carlson's book on landscape painting, which is the most popular book on landscape painting, if you haven't read it, you need to. Mm -hmm. The last chapter is on memory painting. My television show is all done on memory painting. We would go and shoot all of the insert shots at 6 in the morning. And then we would paint, and it would be mid-afternoon when I got done with the painting. But yet, I was still painting the flowers as we saw it at 6 o'clock. Because I knew we were going to take the 6 o'clock shot and put it next to what I was painting at 12. And so I had to remember where all the lights and shadows are. So it becomes somewhat of a trick to try to do that. But if you don't do that, you come back with flat paintings. Okay. So, what's missing here is shadow. It's a, it's a nice study. Mm -hmm. But when you leave a painting, when you leave a spot, you want to have a finished painting, not just a study. Yeah, well, I was, I was impressed all, only just what I could achieve. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's good. The thing that's missing is more, more time. More time. More time. And the problem with that is that your canvas was too big, if you had a smaller canvas. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what I would negotiate with George is say, you know what, George? You have breakfast by yourself. I'll take that hour and I'll paint. The rest of the time I'll be totally committed to because Stefan said so. Oh, oh. be in trouble. I'm already in trouble. You know how many people call up and they go, oh my god, my husband thinks you're the other man in my life because I go to sleep <laughs> listening to you. Yeah. Now one good thing is with, with doing this, and I always tell people, you're better off just getting canvases and doing what you just did. Mm -hmm. Because I guarantee you, if you did nothing, oh. and you did, just took pictures, you would never finish them. Mm -hmm. At least with these canvases around, you will make an effort to try to get something done with them. And so having a six or eight paintings that are undone, sitting around in your studio for the next few weeks isn't unreasonable for you to actually spend some time fixing them up. So you, even if you come back with nothing on canvases, at least you'll have foundations for paintings. But if you come back with an entire camera full of photos, I guarantee you, you will never paint them. Very few camp artists ever really paint the photos that are in their camera. Levon does. But most people don't.